So this is where we left up in the previous video and I actually just changed the material just a little bit so that you can just see the water drops a little bit better. So if I now hit the play button, as you can see that the water drop is like dropping at the same time, but that's not how it works in the real life, obviously, because there should be a delay in time between which these are dropping. To do so, what I can do is we can just offset this time, which is going into the subtract, and we can basically change the this value amount over here. So I'm going to use a noise texture, and I'm going to plug it inside of this one. So I'm going to add in a noise texture. Obviously, we're going to use the object coordinate, and let's use a color ramp just to crunch these colors in. We're going to use point 0.16 at the black point and the white point to be about 1 minus point 0.16, which is 0.84ish. Then I'm going to just plug the color ramp output to this subtract on the top value over there. And now if I hit the play button, as you can see that the drops are now animating at random times. You can also increase the scale and you'll get a different kind of effect. And if you reduce this too low, you'll get something like this. Like You can use 2D by the way. Don't use a 3D noise texture. Just use 2D, 2D one. And what I found out is a value of 7.5-ish or something like that works pretty good for our result over here. So I'm going to keep it like that. And you can reduce the detail to 0. And as you can see, it looks quite good now. And now uh, we got one little problem that wouldn't be noticeable if you are like from this far away from the object. But if you go really close, you can see that uh, this static drop is actually overlapping with this one. So let me show you guys how we're going to fix this one. I'm going to join this two and move it over there. Then I'm going to add in a math node right about here. And I'm going to change this to subtract. And I'm going to subtract the moving drop mask, put it right in there. And yeah, I think it should work now. Let's see how does that looks like. So as you can see, there's no drops that are like going on top of another drop. So it's looking pretty fine now. So yeah, we fixed those problems and now it's looking pretty good. Now we're uh, doing that procedurally by using these nodes, but if you want to do the, this, let's say for a game, then then it would be better to use a simple pre-baked texture instead of generating a noise texture and then using that that for the calculation. So, so to do that, let's first try to bake the static uh, drop bump map. This one is the output for the static drop bump map, uh, as you can see. Also, one thing that I can do is just increase all of these nodes values to pure white okay i also found another way to do deal with this one so i'm going to increase all of them to white obviously if we try to see the material now it would be like super weird and looking horrible but we're going to fix that so so first i'm going to bake out the static drop texture which should be this one not that one because we need to subtract the moving drop from the static drop so yeah and then after subtracting that, we need to get this one through an emission shader. I don't know if we could just uh, put it through the viewer node, but let's pass it to an emission shader and plug it into the surface. Oops, sorry. Then I need to just add a simple plane right about here, let's say, and apply the same material. Then uh, go over to the UV editor, just go over here into the image and click on the new. You could use uh, 4K if you wanted to, but uh, 2 could be good enough. So I'm going to use 2K and I'm going to change this to be static drop bump. Hit OK. Now I'm going to go over into the shader editor. Let's just add an uh, image texture then open the static drop bump texture that we created and make sure that you are selecting this one now go over into this render tab change this to cycles and i want to quickly bake the texture so here we have the texture which is completely baked now if you want to just save the texture just go over in, into the image and then just save the image now create another new image which should be the 
moving drop bump now we need to use the moving drop texture so instead of viewing this one we need to plug uh this one inside of the emission shader so i'm going to move it from this one to that and let's plug this in so this is the moving texture so i'm going to just quickly bake again but remember to change the texture from static drop bump to moving drop bump and bake again and here we have the moving drop save the image as well and now we need to uh, render this uh, noise texture so i'm going to go right about here and change this into the emission plug it in and let's bake again uh, i actually forgot to change the name over here but anyway it doesn't really matter i can just go into the save as change the name to be animation offset and save the image so we got all the masks that we needed so now let's use the textures instead of using all these noise textures to fix this bump issue you can just go ahead and change the distance so instead of using this static drop texture let's import this static drop bump texture that we created right now so we're going to use the vector output as well and we can change this to non-colored data yeah let's just plug it in over there obviously we need to fix the uv scale but it's okay so instead of using this moving texture now i'm going to import the moving pump png file plug in the object coordinate and move it out into this value over there and also this value over here then i'm going to delete this and delete this so there we have it also want to change this to non color data instead of using a color ramp to create this mask i'm going to use just a simple math node because this will give you a lot of performance and your people will not be lagging too much so i'm going to just put it right about here and then change this to multiply and then just increase this to something crazy and check the clamp and there we go we just got the same result but with uh, low cost because we're using a math node instead of using a color ramp i want to just uh, unplug these and connect them into this one and i can just delete this color ramp so we don't need that so i'm going to import this moving bump drop texture that we created and then i can just plug it in basically so we don't need that and there we go now let's see how the texture looks like so there we have it i think it's working as you can see however we need to change the scale and we can just do that just by going about over here and i can just press shift and right click and drag so these are joined and then just gonna add a mapping node over here and now you can just change the scale as you like so i'm gonna put it something like 0.75 that's quite fine also the strength is a little bit too much so we could just go over into the bump map over here and change the distance to 0 0.005 i guess there we have it guys we just created the whole thing without using any kind of noise texture and also one thing that i noticed is that the static drop has a lot more bump than the moving drop so i'm going to just change uh i'm just going to add a math node i guess and then just i'm going to divide this color by a value of 3.9 of 3.8 or something like that and i think it's looking quite good now if you're not quite uh, fine with the divide node you can also use a color ramp and uh, change the strength as you normally would uh, something like this it should be also fine but to save up some performance i'm going to use this uh, divide node so after that is done i can just put all of these nodes into a single node setup so to do that i can just select all of these maybe, maybe not the bump node but all of these and i'm going to press ctrl g to group them and then i'm going to rename this input socket vector and we will have output over here this one should be the bump output so i'm going to put it as the bump so this is the bump output that we're getting 
I'm going to just quickly add another output over here, which should be the mask mask. Then what I can do is I can just put in another math node over here and I can just put it through multiplication and change this value to a high enough value or something like this much and then just press the clamp button. So we'll have both the bump and the mask. And now if I just show you guys what I mean, this is the bump output and there is the mask output. It just determines which part of the image is like uh, water drops and which are not water drops so that we can change our roughness and do many of the cool stuff with that. So yeah, now what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to add a slider over here, which will determine the rain speed. Like, will it be raining or if the rain should stop or not and change the speed of the overall animation. So to do so, I'm going to just go over there. So to change the speed, we just need to change this value over here. So to, if I just show you guys what I mean, let me quickly add another over here. So if I now just disconnect this one, at a value of zero, as you can see that the rain just stopped. And if I change the value to one, as you can see that the rain is dropping. And if I increase it further than one, then the rain speed would be increased it's like something like this, as you can see. So uh, to change this value, I'm going to just put another math node right about here and change this to multiply. And I'm going to just add another input for this socket over here, which you can do just by clicking over there and then put it over there and change this second value to be rain amount and change the default value from zero to one, but you can go further than one. And now if I tab back off that, now you can see that we have a rain amount slider over here. And now if I change the amount to zero, there's no rain. And if I change the amount to one, as you can see, the rain is dropping. So that's done. Uh, so yeah, guys, thanks for watching. And if you have any problem following the tutorial, or if you have any kind of tips to make it look more realistic, you can share them in the comments below. That would be appreciated. And see you guys in the next video.